All right, so once you have Unity opened up, you should be starting off with a Angry Bots uh, project file that comes with Unity. If you don't have these project files, it's fine. We're just going to be going over the interface for now. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is the tool panel up here in the top left. So let's go ahead and click on this little hand icon first. And we're going to go ahead and use the scene window right here. This is our tab of our scene window. So I'm going to zoom out and if you use the hand button, you can left click and drag the scene around. So you can move it left and right, up and down. You can basically pan with this key. So it's just going to grab the scene and move it around. Alright, and then we're going to go over the move tool. Now the move tool is used for moving specific game objects within your game. Right now I have my player selected. As you can see right here, uh, the gizmo around him is highlighted. So I'm going to press F to zoom in on him. Now, if you want to move him in a specific axis, you can just pull on the different arrows here. The green is the Y axis, the X is the red axis right here, and then we have the blue, which is the Z axis. So I can pull on the Z axis arrow and move him up and down. Same with the Z and the X. All right, now we're going to go ahead and rotate him. So let's go ahead and select the rotate tool, which is the next one here. And you can see we get this little globe around him. Now, once again, we have different colors for different axes. So we have this blue one here, that's the Z axis, the green, and then we have the red. Now you can see that the uh, values are being changed over here in the transform panel. So if you want specific values, you can just go ahead and input them here in the X, Y, or Z of the rotation. Same with the position. All right, so now we have our skill tool, which is the next tool up here. You can see we have these little uh, squares around. Uh, once again, we have our different colors for the different axes. If you left click and hold on the middle square right here, you can actually scale him proportionally. But if you just want to have him bigger or smaller in a specific axis, you can just pull on the specific uh, square. Uh, control Z to move him back to where he was. All right, so that is the tool panel up here. So now let's take a look at the hierarchy. The hierarchy includes everything that's in our game here. Anything that's visible will usually be in the hierarchy. So as you can see, we have these little triangles right next to them. That basically means that there's objects underneath each one of those. So we have our parent objects and then we have our child objects directly underneath them. So my player has a bunch of different uh, child objects underneath one of those. And those child objects ha have child objects underneath them as well. So that is the hierarchy. Now in the hierarchy panel, we also have a create drop down menu. And you click on it, you can see we can create different types of game objects from here. Now we're not going to go over how to create game objects just yet, but just know that that's where this drop down menu is located. This is the same drop down menu under the game object create other that you can see here. All right, and directly underneath the hierarchy, we have our project panel. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, open it up a bit. I'm going to move this over. All right, and our project panel includes everything that's located in our game. Any type of file that's uh, used in our game will be in your project panel. As you can see, we have a multitude of different types of folders in here. So I can go ahead and uh, select one of these in here. You can see in this window right here, we have a visual representation of all the files in there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on animation. And we have different scripts for our animations. JS is JavaScript, so this is a JavaScript file. Then we have other types of things. We have sound effects right here. We have our standard assets. We have uh, terrain assets in here. We click on these, you can see we have uh, different types of grass materials. So that is our project panel. It includes all our files. Now once again, we have a create drop down menu is here as well, but this is specific to the project panel. So we can create different types of things, including uh, scripts. Uh, prefabs, materials, animations, so on and so forth. All right, and we can get to that same menu by right clicking in here and going to create. You can see we have the same drop down menu. Right next to our project panel, we have our console tab. So go ahead and click on it, left click. Now our console is going to tell us anything that's wrong with our game. Right now, these little uh, little bubbles right here basically mean these are notes. These are things that Unity wants to tell us. They're not specifically bad things or good things. They're just notes about any types of changes made in our game. 
Now, over here, we have three types of symbols. We have the little quotation bubble right here. Then we have our uh, yield sign right here. This little yield sign is basically anything that could cause problems with our games. So if there's, uh, say, anything wrong with a game, but it's not going to break it, it'll actually usually be a yield sign. So just make just make sure that you uh, pay attention to, to the different uh, symbols in here as well. Then we have our little uh, stop sign right here. The stop sign basically means anything that actually could go wrong with our game, anything that could prevent our game from working properly. So that'll be represented by this little stop sign here. And usually most of the time, if you have that in your console here, it will not allow you to play your game. So you need to be uh, wary of seeing those. Now, if you don't have your console tab uh, visible, you can go ahead and uh, see it by looking down here. Usually this will just show you the last thing in the console that was displayed. So if you have any issues with your scripts, you'll be able to see a warning down here. So just make sure that you're uh, taking a look at that as well. All right, and then finally we're going to take a look at the inspector panel. I'm going to go ahead and click on an object so we can see what we're working with. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up a bit. So with my player selected, you can see everything that's associated with my player. So right here we have our name of our game object. It's called player. Then we have this little check mark. If we uncheck it, you can see he basically disappears. All right, and then right underneath that, we have our different plat. We have our tags. Sorry about that, tags. All right, and then we have, uh, you know, we can name it respawn, finish, editor only, so on and so forth. The tags are very useful for using in scripts. You know, if you want to use our, uh, if you want to call an object by its tag, you want to make sure that the tag is set in here. All right, and then underneath that we have our transform panel. We can see it. We can set the position, the rotation, and the scale values. Now, if you hover over the X, Y, and Z, you can see that we get these little arrows above them. If you left click and hold, you can move them side to side, or you can just alternatively just type in a specific value. So you could say negative five, enter, and there you go. So that is our transform panel. And as you can see here, this will tell us everything that's attached to our game object. So my game object right here of the player has a capsule collider. The capsule collider is this green object right here. We'll be going over colliders in a future tutorial, but this is just what it looks like. So if I uncheck it, you can see the kind of hides away. I'm gonna go ahead and check it back on. And then finally, we have these little symbols over here. One has a question mark over a little book. This opens the reference for that specific item. So if I click on it, I'm going to get this manual that pops up in a web browser. And it's going to discuss that specific object. All right, and then right next to that, we have a little cog icon. And this is useful for resetting different types of uh, changes that you made in that uh, specific panel. You can move it up or down or you can revert to a prefab. And as you can see, we have a bunch of different scripts attached to it as well. So if you attach a script to a game object, this is where it's going to be located. All right, so that is the inspector panel. If you want to add anything to a game object, this is where it's going to be located. As you can see, we can add a component in here. If you click on it, you can add different types of things, scripts, audio, physics, so on and so forth. So that is the inspector panel. All right, and then finally, the most important part, which is our scene window. Our scene window is where we're going to be making all our changes to our game. You're going to be including everything and anything in your game through the scene window. So anything that's visible in your game will be in your scene window. Now we're not going to go over the scene window and the game window too much here. We're going to be covering that specifically in another tutorial, but this is where it's located. And right next to that, we have our game window. This is where, where we will be playing our game. So the scene window is where you'll be making your changes and uh, actually edit, editing anything in your game. And the game window is where you will be testing it. So that is the interface of Unity. Hopefully you gained an understanding of how to navigate around the interface in Unity 3D.